Good day, brothers and sisters. This is Anthony Moore for Your Money More. And today we are going to talk about evolution. Now, I am not talking about evolution in the sense of nature, the birds, the trees, the bees, dinosaurs. I, I am actually going to talk about my personal evolution. But it's not about me. It's about we, but I am going to talk about me in hopes that it empowers we as in us because my evolution has greatly informed me that without we doing what need be as in us, we will continue to be denied justice. So just a little bit. In terms of me going to college and graduating from college, I won a whole lot of scholarships, like more than 35 separate scholarships, six figures, more than six figures altogether, paid for my undergraduate and graduate college degrees. And afterward, I wrote a book on how to win scholarships for college. And, and, and I did a whole lot of seminars, workshops. A lot of counseling one-on-one -on -one with families, with groups. And I had the privilege of helping a number of students and parents finance college with minimum debt, if not completely debt-free. And actually, one of my presentations on scholarships that I gave several years ago, I have the link to it below in the description box. So if you know anybody that's going to college or thinking about going to college, especially Younger, like high school, even elementary school, it's about starting early, as I break down in the presentation below. But I'm here to talk about what my journey undeniably revealed to me about this corrupt, corrosive, destruction, destructive, ultimately self defeating system that we live in here in the United States and to a broad extent in the world. Now, the name of my, the book that I wrote on scholarships was called Scholarship Rich with the subtitle, Get Paid, Not Played to Go to College. Now, that subtitle, it's a, it's, a, it's a catchy subtitle if I say so myself. Get Paid, Not Played to Go to College. But it's more than just some catchy words. It's the reality. It's the reality that I learned as I got deeper and deeper and started studying student loans and studying why was it? Because I wondered why is it that so many people are going to college, they're getting in debt, either they are not graduating even though they're still being left with this debt or they spending all this money and getting, getting in debt, getting in debt relative to all the money that they have borrowed to spend on college. And yet... They are not getting employment in the fields that they pursued their degrees in. And even if they are, they are not getting adequate compensation to effectively pay down the student loans. And so that led me to really study what's going on. And I learned just how exploitive that the student loan game is. because And, that's, and that really reinforced how politics and economics go hand in hand, which is why these politicians set out all day, every day, in every way, transcending political party. Because we already know politics is phonier than a dollar store hair weave, and no sooner than these politicians get elected, if not before they get elected, do they sell out faster than guns, so to people who buy guns to make up for not making a football team in high school. In other words, they sell out quick, fast, and in a hurry. It's why these politicians, when they want our vote, or when they're trying to do what they what they puppet masters, they're trying to push some agenda on us, they're trying to get us to go along with something or acquiesce to something that's not in our best interest, but that serves the people who pull their puppet strings to the detriment of the very constituents that they have been elected and are in those positions to serve. It's why 
When they were trying to get our vote, come vote. We need your vote. We need your vote. Come on. It's midterm. Midterm. Hey, it's the election. Voters in the office, so we're going to do a damn thing for you. They don't say that with their words, of course, but they say that with their actions. And it's the reason why that when these people are trying to get our vote, like I said, they're trying to put, force something down our throat. They're trying to get us to agree to something. They get us to acquiesce. That they all in our face saying, do this, do that. Vote, 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 vote. But the minute that they don't need nothing from us, when it's actually time for them to put up or shut up, when it's time to them to fulfill their part of the responsibility and serve the very people who they were elected to serve, when it's time for us us to demand what we are do from them as them being our, our representatives all of a sudden they become harder to find than the getaway vehicle at the robbery and we're talking about a robbery where the criminals know what they are doing not amateurs but the research that i did with student loans and really studying our system the system that we live in i learned that the same thing it reinforced the fact that politics and economics go hand in hand because the same thing that happened with student loans is the same thing that happened with mortgages, more specifically subprime mortgages. It's the same thing that happened with credit cards where these things, which could have been good things or these could have been um, not destructive things because people bought off politicians and influenced the political process, they were able to use these things to exploit the masses. The same way that the... the like. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, and a lot of these dynamics, a lot of the underpinnings of our system, the financialization of our system, I put them in a book that I wrote that I have yet to release called Cracking the System, What Debt-Free College and Crack Cocaine Teach Us About the New Global Economy. I might start releasing excerpts. So as you can tell by the title and more specifically the subtitle, I go there because it's about cracking the system and financialization is what gutted the industrial base of this country. Financialization is what shipped so many high paying jobs or decent paying jobs overseas. Fi financialization is what's kicking the is what has decimated the middle class into a broader extent, the, the overall American working class. And the same dynamic, as I said, that led to mortgages being something that could have been and should have been a good thing into a exploitative thing, as we saw with the sub poor, subprime mortgage crisis that led to the global financial crisis that decimated the global economy. It's the same thing that happened to student loans, where people using influencing politicians passed policy that allowed them that allowed them to exploit the very finance in the college with student loans, taking it from some taking it from something that could have been a good thing and and and. and in terms of its origins, in certain ways was a good thing and was designed. And a lot of these things, people do have good intentions, but they get exploited. And it, and it, and it goes beyond whether it's capitalism, socialism, because any system that involves humans, people are always going to strive to game that system to their exclusive benefit to the detriment of the masses, which is why you need effective checks and balances, which is why you need a public, an educated public that know, that know what's going on and is willing to fight to get for what's right and to be treated fairly. And it really, so it ain't, so it ain't about even getting caught up in capitalism or socialism or any of these isms, communism, whatever. These are just words. And in practice, these systems don't function by the very definition of the by, by the way they are defined. And these are just words that I use to manipulate people, to take advantage of people, to deceive people. Because as I said, as I said, any system without the proper checks and balances will be gained by the by the few for their personal benefit to the detriment of the many. So it's about a better system, a new system. Every system at one time was a new system and any system that actually works for, because our system, in case you didn't figure it out, ain't working. The fact that we have that the masses are suffering, living paycheck to paycheck, where more and more and more and more wealth is being consolidated in the hands of fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer, and fewer people, where we send a 40 billion overseas for a so-called war overseas when our infrastructure is crawling over here, where people are working full-time jobs, can't afford to feed their family, and, and in fact, and taking them back to college, the very thing that students were told, parents were told, that you need to do to better yourself, to be a constructive and productive member of society, to maximize your to maximize your, your earning power, that very thing was used to exploit students.
and very intentional and very deliberate. So you can't say this system is functioning when the very notion of what we tell people to do in order to, be to better themselves, we let we send them, we use it. It's just another means to take advantage of them and exploit them. Like I said, same thing that happened with subprime mortgages, credit cards, our overall consumeristic society. And so the more and more I studied student loans and what was going on, the more and more I realized these things. And the more I realized and understood that politics and economics go hand in hand, which is why these people, the, the elites, the wealthy, buy these politi politicians off to tilt the laws to serve their economic interests. Because all politics is, at a fundamental level, is the laws that govern a group of people. And without that, you have anarchy. <laughs> so I think we all want to live in a system where we have some laws that we all know about, even though, of course, not all people follow the laws, but that's why you need an informed, in a democracy especially, you need an informed people, an active people, a people who are willing to fight for what's right, fight for what's fair, fight to not be exploited, which is where we at and have been at and will continue to be at until we either step up or just get further exploited for the worse because it's not going to get better unless we get together and make it better and so that's the, and so that evolution a lot of it and why i'm advocating for things like the 1619 rap relief executive order that we are pushing our government here in illinois to sign multi-billionaire democrat jb prisker who inherited all his money who we call jb i wouldn't be governor without the black boat prisker because it's about economic empowerment and no it's not about begging how the hell you gonna beg for what's rightfully yours no it's about organization it's about doing what's best it's about having a functioning economy with shared prosperity it's about doing what these people would do if they wouldn't pimp if they wouldn't manipulate us if they wouldn't exploit us if they were all about getting more and more and more and more hands because in the hands of people who are already wealthy, who already got way more than they ever need at the expense of the masses, everyday working class people, the people in the case of these politicians who, are they, who they are elected to serve, getting less than what they do need. But, 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 but I learned how corrupt politics could be, and this is part of my evolution, even as an undergraduate in college. Because even as an undergraduate in college, I hoped that politics could be a means to help the students. And so I decided to run for student government president. And I actually end up becoming acting student government president prior to the election because it was a vacant position and nobody else has stepped up. And so when the administration, it was at, and, and at this young age, as an undergraduate in college, I learned back then how rough, how cold, not just politics, but anytime you're fighting for what's right, anytime you're fighting for the people, how cold and how rough it can be and how you automatically become a target. Because when, when the administration thought that I was going to be a, a rubber stamp and just go along with the, uh, with the program, oh man, they were going to sneak me in through the back door. Just give me the position. That's not a sexual reference. It, ain't, it, it was rough and brutal, but it ain't that kind of program. And again, now, now, again, it's his student government after all now. We're talking about actual politics, federal, state, um, the real, the big leagues, hey, we know wild, crazy, out there kind of stuff go on like that. It's the real world. And that's one of the things that we got to get with is dealing with this world and society as it is and not sitting back and not just going for anything because these people, as I said before, they don't stop and won't stop unless they got stopped. They don't just say Hey, we got enough. We got everything. They got nothing. Let's just let it be. They say we got enough. They say we got. We say they say we got everything. They got nothing. Let's get me. Let's get even more. Maybe we can charge them for air. But let me get to back to the point about the student government situation. So they were gonna sneak me in through the back door. But once they, without even having an election, but once they found out that I was for the students, once they found out that I was, I was not going to be a rubber stamp once they found out that I was going to challenge power. Oh, man, they conspired against me. On the day of the election, they got a hand-picked right-in candidate to run against me, and the count was bogus. It was ugly. And the thing about it is, the administration, I don't think that they were bad people. They were people that I probably would have liked in, in, a, in, a, in a whole different context. But it shows how a corrosive, corruptive system can corrupt 
otherwise good people, which is the broader system which which, which we live in. And y'all know that's the truth. Well, a lot of y'all work jobs and they, they cause you to do things, even if they're not technically unethical, ugly things, not nice things, things you would prefer not to do because you live in such a, corro a corrosive dysfunctional system where the everyday where the people who actually serve everyday people are overburdened not because we don't have the resources but because more and more wealth is being consolidated in the hands of fewer and fewer people and so the everyday people get the scraps and so if you're working at a job where you got to serve everyday people chances are you're overburdened you overwork because you're not getting the resources that you need and that the people who you serve need even though the resources are available here in the wealthiest country in the world the united states of america but we got to fight and work toward getting what's what we need and it, unless we do, it ain't gonna change. So, so that's 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 what that's part of my evolution and why I'm about what I'm about and why it's about doing what got to be done and then some. And by the way, I'm an accountant, which is perfect because uh, shout out to my homeboy Ray. Hey, it's about mission accountability. I'm accountant holding power accountable, and we need some accounting because fact because it's about following the money. Especially when we're talking about these sellout politicians. It's about, we need some forensic accounting. So, I'm, hey, we are accountants holding power accountable. Mission accountability. So, like I said, uh, like, subscribe. I didn't say it, but I'm saying it now. Like, subscribe, click the notification bell. Click on the scholarship presentation video in the description box if you want to. Get some insight on positioning yourself or a loved one or somebody you know, putting them in the best possible position to win scholarships for college and hopefully putting them on that path. And if nothing else, and if nothing else giving them some helpful information toward that end. Also, I got a paper, speaking of me being an accounting accountant, I got a paper, part one of a paper called Solving the Mystery of Measuring and Maximizing Business Financials. I got the link to that below where we're talking about accounting, but we're talking about it as it relates to economics. We're talking about it as it relates to politics. We're talking about it as it relates to the bigger picture. It talks about what, how when I say, when I talk about this is a new emerging, still yet to be determined, unfolding, new post-COVID, new global economic paradigm, not just talking. It's real. So, like I said, like, subscribe, click the notification bell, check out the links below, check out the scholarship presentation video, the paper, the 1619 Rapid Leave Executive Order. Peace. Anthony Moore for your money, signing off.